Hey everybody, we're back now to start turn three. But before we start turn three, uh, we're going to have to go back, or I'm going to have to go back and correct the rather serious error I made right at the end of turn two. And it had to do with the firing that went on over here, specifically with Private Miller. If you'll recall, he had a uh, run and gun order where he fired at the German soldier and uh, I, I added the modifier for the range. I reduced the modifier for the uh, order that the uh, uh, German soldier had, but I forgot to take into account the modifier on a run and gun order. Remember, there's a run and gun minus two modifier. I forgot to take that into account. And what it should have done is reduced Private Miller's weapons skill from four to two. But I did not do that. I rolled, it was a three, and so I counted it as a hit, when it really should have been counted as a miss. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to replace the soldier that had been killed back on his hex. Additionally, I'm going to take the KIA card that was the wound and put it back on the deck. Now, in addition to that, Private Johnson had not yet acted during that round. And he was here in this uh, hex, but he moved to this hex because there was nothing for him to do. Had he still been in this hex, he would have gone ahead and done another shot at uh, sold at Schultz. And so that's what we're going to do here uh, at this point before we move on and continue with turn three is I'm actually going to let Private Johnson have his fire shot at uh, the German enemy character. So the range is two, which is a minus one modifier. I'm sorry, a plus one modifier. Uh, the German soldier, to be quite honest, I don't recall what his order was, but it was a minus one modifier to even the modifiers out. That's as far as we got with Private Miller. What I forgot to do was then to add the minus two modifier with the run and gun order, which is the same order that Private Johnson has. So it should be a minus two modifier on a weapons skill of five. So we need a three or less to hit. And we roll a six, so that is actually a miss. And we can go ahead and remove that run and gun order now from Johnson. And we are actually now caught up. We are actually where we should have been at the end of turn two. And so we can now go forward with turn three. I apologize for that mistake, uh, but it happened. So we move on now to turn three. The first step is if a player does not have a card, he needs to go ahead and choose a, a draw one. We have one card remaining of our original cards. There were no plan orders, so there's no friend, uh, other cards to add. We're not in excess of five. We're at the point where we have to play a card. This is the only card we have, so we'll go ahead and play. This is card number 23. It gives an initiative value of 28 to Charlie team and 30 to Baker team. Uh, it is a discard card, so there's no need to deal with orders. All right, now we go ahead in the friendly orders phase, and what are we going to do here? Well, first things first, uh, here in this hex right here, I technically can give Private Stubbs an order at this point, but it will be immediately changed to the melee order. And so I'm just going to go ahead and give him the melee order that he's going to have anyway. But I've still got uh, Private Walsh and Corporal Thomas. Private Walsh, I'm going to give him a run and gun order. I gave him aimed fire last turn, hoping he could shoot at someone, but none of the enemy soldiers moved in his, his range. So I'm going to give Private Walsh uh, a movement order as well as gun order, and then I'm going to move him off here so he can at least fire up to that area there, and then we'll go from there. 
As far as Corporal Thomas goes, uh, Corporal Thomas is the only friendly character with a leadership skill, meaning he is the only friendly character who can do a plan operation or a plan order in order to gather more cards uh, to use. And so that's what I'm going to do. Here is the plan order. You'll see it's got all zeros. He won't act at all in any of the impulses. But if he still has that order at the end of the turn, we'll go ahead and make a check and he may uh, add extra cards that I'll be able to use from this point forward. So that's the end of Charlie team. For Baker team, uh, taking a look at what we've got, I'm actually for Private Walsh, I'm going to use uh, Aimed Fire. He's got a couple, he's got at least one soldier he can shoot at right here, the one that mysteriously came back from the dead. For uh, Private Goldstein, however, I'm going to use Rapid Fire, which is going to allow him to shoot in every impulse. And for Private Johnson, I think I'm just going to use Aimed Fire there. And so those are my orders uh, that I'm going to give for this turn, turn number three. Uh, and we'll see how that goes. We now move on to step three in the sequence of play, which is the enemy card in order space. Every character on the board, every enemy character on the board, and there's two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten remaining. We've had two dummy characters, remember. Every one of them gets a card drawn for their order. I'll do the red first, and I'm going to start up here. And since this is the first red card, it will be their initiative card, and that's 11. That is a character in normal morale. He's in cover, and so that's a hide order. He gets a hide order. What that means is, is he's not going to move. He's not going to fire. He's basically just trying to take protection, and the hide order is the, the best defensive order in the game. We'll next go to the soldier in the cornfield. He's normal uh, morale, and he's in the open. In the open, normal, run and gun, six. Now, here's where we need to, uh, it's, it's, I'm sorry, it's run and gun, six, and then C. Here's where uh, one of the special rules may come into play. We talked a little bit about it last turn that the C means uh, we could issue a charge order. The G means we could issue a grenade order. When that appears on the order card, you check to see if there's a spotted friendly character within four hexes. And in this case, there does. One, two, three, actually. So we've got Private Stubbs down there as a, pro as a spotted friendly character within four hexes. And if there is, you... Uh, make a troop quality check for the enemy character. Now his troop quality is six, so we roll against that, and he rolls an eight. Okay, now, had he rolled a six or less, that run and gun six order would have been changed to a charge order, and we would have gotten to see what charging does. However, because the... the uh, roll failed, we will issue the run and gun six order. As for the character in the same hex as Private Stubbs, again, we could give a different order, but we're not going to uh, because it would just immediately be changed to a melee order anyway. We'll move over to the right to uh, the, the soldiers over there. Uh, and, and you'll notice I did not draw a card because it doesn't matter for that soldier. So we're going to go with the soldier here. He is uh, normal morale and he is in cover. So in cover, normal suppression fire. Let me find the suppression fire. However, because he 
is using the Car 98K rifle as his gun. That is defined as a slow weapon. So instead of the regular suppression fire order, which lets him fire every phase, he only gets to fire in uh, second and fourth impulses with the slow suppression fire order. We'll now draw a card for that unknown soldier to his right, and that's the last red soldier. He is normal morale in the open. In the open, normal is run and gun 1C. Uh, taking a quick look, there are no spotted friendly characters within four, so he gets a run and gun 1. Now let me go ahead and find a run and gun 1 order. There we go. And that's the end of the red orders. Now we'll go ahead and do blue. We'll start with the unknown character up in the cornfield. So he's normal morale in the open. He gets an aimed fire order. And because this is the first blue, it'll be their initiative value of 73 as well. So let me find the aimed order or aimed fire orders. I believe that was the same thing he had last turn. Maybe not. We'll next go here, uh, normal morale in uh, cover, aimed fire G. Uh, again, he's not within four hexes, so he also gets an aimed fire order. We'll go to the blue soldier over here to the right in the rocks. He's also normal morale and in cover. He get, also gets a hide order like we had up above. Looks like some of the Germans are taking this opportunity to take some cover. We've now got our two soldiers down below. We'll start with the known soldier, the one that we had inadvertently killed off last turn. He's in the open with normal morale. That's Evade 65GC. Now he's most definitely within four hexes of a, of a spotted friendly soldier. So he gets to make... Uh, a troop quality check with a troop quality of five. The first number or first letter here is G, which means we'll do a troop quality check for G. If that passes, he gets a grenade order. If that fails, because the other letter C is also there, we'll do a second troop quality check for charge. If that one succeeds where the first one failed, he'd get a charge order. If they both fail, he'll default back to that evade default order. So he's got a troop quality of five, no modifiers, rolling for grenade, and something happened that I've never seen happen on a D10 before. It actually came up uh, cockeyed. So we'll have to roll again. Comes up as nine. So he fails on the grenade check. We'll now do the charge check. And this comes up as nine as well. Boy, I really wanted to show you those things, but uh, that's not going to happen. So he's issued a grenade, uh, an evade six five order. Let me go ahead and find an evade six five. He's going to move down into <clears throat> the friendly soldiers, and so we're going to end up probably with another melee situation. Last but not least, we'll do the blue soldier to the right in the hedge. Normal morale in cover. He's got a run and gun four as his order. So let's find run and gun four. Oh, that's not it. Well, I found one, two, five, and six. Four's got to be in here somewhere, right? Jiminy Christmas. Like I said earlier, so here we go. Sometimes it would be nice to have the room to have all of these numbers separated out, but we don't. All right, so that's the end of the orders phase. All the orders have been given. Next, we've got to reset our initiative track. and We'll do that here. Uh, looking at the initiative numbers, red team has 11 and they'll go first. Then we've got Charlie team with 28. That's followed by Baker team with 30. 
and it'll be followed up by blue team with 73. So here in turn three, each of the impulses, it'll be red team, Charlie team, Baker team, blue team. All right, let's go back up to the map and let's get started. First up is red team. And again, we move top to bottom and then if they're in the same, it's whoever's closest. He's up at the top, he's got hide. That's a zero in the first impulse, so he does nothing. Next would be uh, this soldier here. Uh, he's got run and gun six. So he, in, in run and gun, has a, one, a black one in the first impulse, so he moves, and he moves to here. Now, the only unspotted friendly characters are these two. He cannot see either of them because of the hedges, so no spotting is done. Next, we have this soldier here. That is a slow suppression order, which is zero in the first impulse, so he does nothing. Next, we have this unknown soldier. He has run and gun as well, but he has run and gun one, and so he moves up into the rocks, the same as this blue soldier, and so temporarily they will share the rocks uh, uh, location and again, he can't see over there for uh, spotting. <clears throat> All right. That brings us to this area here, uh, which is going to be a melee attack by uh, Soldat Winkler. And remember, a melee attack uh, is against the troop quality. And he's got a troop quality of minus four. Uh, his... his Troop quality to start is five. His modifiers are minus four. And so what that means is, is he's only gonna have to make a troop quality check uh, against one. If he gets a zero or a one, it's a hit. Otherwise it's a miss. Except for, and I almost I almost missed this here, melee orders, nobody moves in or does anything in impulse one. So he's done. Uh, so we are done with the red team, so that's the end of their impulse. We now move to Charlie team, which is right here. Uh, same thing with the melee command. It has zero, so nothing happens. He's got a plan command, which is all zeros, so nothing happens. And he's got run and gun, so he needs to move one hex. And I'm going to move him right here. Now, he most certainly, I, I'm thinking at this point, most certainly has line of sight to that red enemy uh, character up here, but just checking to be certain, and, and yes, he does. So, can't do it this turn, but next turn he can certainly take a fire uh, a shot at that soldier. That's the end of Charlie team. We now come to Baker team. Uh, we'll start here with Private Johnson. He has aimed fire. Now he can see this enemy character, he can see this enemy character, but he can't fire at this enemy character because he has no line of sight. Uh, but he does have line of sight here, so he's going to take, oh, at, well, with aimed fire, it's zero anyway, so it doesn't matter. We also have an aimed fire over here, also zero, so it doesn't matter. But Private Gold, however, Private Johnson and perhaps even Private Miller uh, both have line of sight here, so they're both going to get to do a spotting check. Private Johnson, that's a distance of two, which gives me a plus one modifier. The soldier has run and gun in a hedge. Run and gun in a hedge is a zero modifier, so we have plus one with a troop quality of five. That means a six or less is a successful spot, and we roll a two. So that unknown enemy character is now spotted for the first time, and we flip it up, and it's a yet another one of the dummy characters. So we'll go ahead and remove that dummy character from the game. Uh, it actually kind of makes things a little easier for Baker team, at least for the moment. <clears throat> Taking a look now for spotting for Private Miller. The only other unknown characters are these three. He certainly doesn't have line of sight to either of these two. 
but perhaps to that one. Let's take a look. And he absolutely does have line of sight. It crosses the logs, but remember, logs only block line of sight for certain orders, and neither run and gun nor aimed fire are in that group. So that also is going to be a spotting opportunity. It's one, two, three, four, five, it's six. Uh, for a distance, that's no modifier. He's got run and gun as his order in, in rocks. That's a minus one modifier. So it's a minus one modifier total on a troop quality of four, meaning we need a three or less to be successful. And we get a three. So we have another successful spot. And we'll flip this character over. And we find we have another dummy character. So that's the fourth dummy character out of 12 initial placements that we found. That's uh, one third. And as you'll recall, there are nine dummy characters out of 26 possible total in this scenario. So the numbers are spot on with even two more left to go. So that's the end of the impulse for Privates Johnson and Miller. But we still have Private Goldstein. He has line of fire to here. He also has a line of sight to this one up here with a slow suppression order. But he's going to go after this one here. Uh, and I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but Private Goldstein is using the bar. And with a bar, a range of two is well within the range of 150. It provides a plus one modifier, but we also have our rate of one or two, meaning Private Goldstein can actually shoot twice here if I choose. I can choose to shoot once or I can choose to shoot twice. I'm actually going to choose to shoot twice. I, I want to be sure I get my best chance at a hit. So we've got a plus one modifier for range. The soldier is in evade order, and he's in the open. So we check the chart, and evade in the open is a minus one modifier, so both of those modifiers are canceled. But rapid fire carries with it a minus two modifier. So Private Goldstein has a troop quality of, or a weapon skill of four, minus two modifier. That's a two hit number of two or less, a zero, one, or two, but he gets to roll twice. So the first roll comes up as a three, that's a miss. The second roll, the second shot comes up as a four. Those are both misses. Uh, and so that's also the end of Baker team because the two unknown enemies are behind uh, rocks and whatnot, so there's no spotting check. That's the end of Baker Team's impulse. <clears throat> we now move to the final uh, group, or the final team, the blue team, for this impulse. First soldier, first character to move is this one. He's got aimed fire. That's zero, so nothing happens. This character here has hide. Also zero, nothing happens. Aimed fire. That's zero, nothing happens. And finally... This character here has an evade order, which has a black one, which means he must move. And his number says six. And six moves in this order right here, in this direction right here. And so what we've got are some very close proximity individuals. Uh, looking over here for line of sight to spotting, they're both behind the trees. So there's no chance of spotting there. That's the end of the blue team impulse, and that is the end of impulse number one. So let's go on to impulse number two and continue on. Just like last time, we'll start here with Hyde. He's got zero as his impulse order, which means he can't move, but he now does have line of sight to Private Walsh. And let me just check to make certain. Um, un and, and unfortunately for red team, the order explicitly states the enemy character with this order may do nothing else this turn. And so he cannot spot. 
All right, that might be good for us here in a few seconds when Private Walsh gets to shoot. We now have uh, this uh, enemy character here. He's got a an order of a red one with run and gun, meaning he can shoot if he can see someone. He can't see either of these two. He can see Private Stubbs here and has line of sight and it's within range, but remember you cannot fire into a hex with a melee order. And these three characters here, although they're all spotted, the line of sight goes through the hedge so he can't see. That means he must move and he moves in this direction. All right. Then we come to this soldier here. He has slow suppression fire. Now, he can't fire at any of these. He has no line of sight, but he certainly has line of sight to both of these characters. Uh, and the rule states he will shoot at the one that's closest. One, two, three, four, five. They're both five hexes away. So let me check my... Uh, Actually, you know what? The first rule is easiest to hit. And the easiest to hit, we've got rapid fire in a tree or aimed fire in the open. Aimed fire in the open is a zero modifier. Rapid fire in a tree is minus two. So he'll choose to shoot at uh, uh, Private Miller here. Now, He's using suppression fire. That's a little bit different than uh, regular fire. Um, well, actually, no order or terrain effects apply to this shot, which means they're both equally likely, which means also we uh, go on uh, which one is easier to hit doesn't matter. They're the same. Closest is the same, so random. We'll go with a D6, one through three, we'll go with Private Miller. It's a three, so it will indeed be Private Miller that is being shot at during this particular uh, uh, impulse. Now, when you are using suppressive fire, if you hit, you don't take a wound, it's only a morale check. So, let's see if there's a hit to begin with. There's one, two, three, four, five. it's a distance of five. He's using the car 98K, well within range, no modifier. You don't use terrain and order modifiers, so it is a truly an unmodified shot with a weapon skill of five. <coughs> he shoots, he gets a one, so that is a success, that is a hit. However, a hit in this specific instance is only a morale check and not a wound. So there's no need to draw a card at this point. <clears throat> so we do a morale check for Private Miller. His troop quality is four. He has no modifiers. A four or less would be good. It's a zero. Checking the morale check box a roll of zero is actually plus one morale level. That means his morale level actually goes up for being shot at. So it kind of backfired. It'll go up to bold. You'll see it gives him a plus, plus one uh, troop quality uh, boost for next time. All right. That's the end of his impulse. We have one more red uh, character to deal with and that is this one here with the melee attack again melee attacks are troop quality checks they are modified he's got minus four on his modifiers he's got a, a troop quality of five that means he needs a zero or a one to hit and it comes up seven so he misses on that melee attack and that's the end of the red team's uh, impulse here in impulse number two. Next up is Charlie team. We're going to start here with Private Walsh. He has line of sight up here. He's got a fire order. So he's going to go ahead and fire. One, two, three, four, five. That's six uh, hexes. 
That's a range modifier of zero. The soldier has a hide order in a hedge. And that's a minus three modifier. And Private Walsh has a weapons skill of four, <clears throat> which means he has a two hit number of one. We roll, it comes up seven, so that's a miss. Private Walsh cannot see any of the un unknown enemy units, so his impulse is done. Uh, we move over here to Corporal Thomas. He's planning, so he does nothing this turn, which brings us to Private Stubbs. He also has a melee order, which means it's a troop quality check. And he has a troop quality of six and no modifiers. He needs a six or less. And he rolls a five, so that is a hit. And so we're going to go ahead and draw a wound card. And I know what it is because it's the one we had to replace. It's KIA. And this time it's accurate. This soldier is now out of action. And uh, his KIA, he's out. That's victory points for me. I'll go ahead and place my KIA marker and replace his order markers back in the box. Now, next turn, or next impulse, uh, Private Stubbs still has his melee order, but there's nobody for him to melee. When that happens, when you have a soldier uh, in a hex with no enemy characters, it'll, he'll automatically receive a duck back order on his next turn. So that's the end of Charlie team. We now move over to Baker team. And with Baker team here, we've got three uh, potential shooters. Uh, Private Johnson here can only see this soldier. Private Goldstein and Private Miller, however, can both see both of these soldiers. Uh, I'm not sure if Private uh, Miller can see that soldier or not. Let's take a quick look and see. Because if he can, who, who shoots at who here uh, can be affected. And, yeah, line of sight certainly can see there as well. So here's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to use Private Johnson right here to shoot at this soldier here. Hopefully, hopefully we can maybe eliminate him and allow my other soldiers to shoot up here. So we've got Private Johnson with aimed fire, a range of two with an M1 rifle. That is a plus one range modifier. The soldier is in evade order in the open. And that's a minus one modifier, so our modifiers there are equal. However, aimed fire does not carry any modifiers, so it's a straight up check against weapon skill. And for Private Johnson, that's a five. He shoots, it's a zero. Now, when you roll a natural zero when firing, two things happen. Number one, it's an automatic hit. It would have been anyway. But in addition, if you roll a zero on a, on a two hit, your morale goes up one level. So he's going to go up to bold as well. <clears throat> All right, so he's up to bold morale. And now we need to draw a wound card for that enemy character. And it comes up close call morale check. Which means we just make a morale check on this soldier. His troop quality is 5. He has no modifiers. So let's go ahead and do a morale check. The roll is indeed 5, so he passes. And when you pass a morale check, uh, nothing happens. So even though Private Johnson hit that soldier, nothing happens. All right, we're going to do Private Goldstein next. And I'm going to have him also shoot here. I really wanted to have him shoot up there, but I really want to take care of him before next impulse when he moves, and he's going to move into the trees for a melee attack. So it's a distance of one on the bar. A distance of one, you'll see, is actually a plus two modifier, which is good. 
The target has evade in the open. That's a minus one. So we've got a plus one modifier at this point. With the rapid fire order, it's a minus two modifier. So that nets out to a minus one modifier on a weapon skill of four. Meaning Private Goldstein needs a three or less. But remember, Private Goldstein also using the bar has a rate of fire where I'm going to actually roll twice. So I need a, a three or less on one of these two rolls. The first roll is a zero. So just like before, we have a morale level raise and a hit. And so we roll, and, and we, we do both hits separately. So this first hit is a light wound. When you have a light wound, first thing you do is you put a light wound marker on the soldier with its uh, modifiers. Uh, you then also change its orders to duck back. So we'll remove his evade order and give him a duck back order. So there'll be no uh, melee. And then thirdly, you conduct a wound morale check. Now, light wounds give a minus one modifier to his troop quality of five, so that makes it four. And we roll for that, he gets a three on a wound morale check. Less than or equal, it's a minus one morale level, which means his morale level drops to cautious. All right, so he's now got both a light wound, that is a modifier for leadership, uh, troop quality, and firing, but also now a cautious morale level, oops, which gives also another minus one to troop quality and a minus one to uh, weapon skill. So he's got minus two on his modifiers for troop quality, which gives him a a net troop quality of three. That's the end of Private Goldstein's impulse. We now have Private Williams, and I've got a, a choice here. I can have him shoot up here, or I can have him try to finish off down here. Now, this guy's not going anywhere. He's going to be there next impulse. And so I think I'm going to leave him alone, and I'm actually going to have him shoot up here uh, at the aimed fire uh, enemy character in the stones. The reason being is if I can do something there, if I can get a hit there, he's not going to fire back at me in a few seconds. All right, so the one, two, three, four, five, that's a, a, a distance of six, which is no modifier for the M1. He's got an aimed fire order in the rocks. That is a minus two modifier. He's using aimed fire, so there's no other modifiers. His bold morale doesn't change anything. So it's a minus two modifier on a weapons skill of four, so we need a two or less. And we roll an eight, and so that's a miss. No spotting goes on, so that's the end of Charlie, or I'm sorry, Baker team's impulse. We now move on to the blue team for them to do their impulse. First soldier is here. He's got aimed fire, uh, but he can't see anybody, so he can't fire. This soldier here has hide, so he can't do anything. Then we have this soldier here, the one we were just shooting at. He, of course, can, has, has line of sight here. Uh, no line of sight to the other two, but he's going to fire here. That's one, two, three, four, five, six as the distance for the car 98K. That's a zero modifier. Uh, with aimed fire in the open, that is also a zero modifier. And so it's a straight up weapons skill because it's aimed fire. His weapon skill, though, is only three. So he needs a three or less. And the roll is a nine. Now, we haven't seen this before. When you have a roll of nine, a natural nine, two things happen, just like with a natural zero. Number one, it's an automatic miss. But... Number two, it's an ammo depletion. 
If you don't have a low ammo marker, you now put low ammo on that soldier. If you do have low ammo and it happens again, then you flip that marker over and it becomes out of ammo and cannot fire until you do a reload action. So he's got low ammo here at the end of Impulse 2. Our last blue soldier is this soldier here. Due to being hit last turn, he was given duck back. On the first activation, you flip that over to hide, nothing happens. So that's the end of Blue Team, and that's the end of Impulse 2, and we'll be right back for Impulse 3. All right, we're back for Impulse 3. Again, we'll start with the Red Team, minus one character from the last time because of the KIA soldier. We've got Hyde. He does nothing. This is Run and Gun 6, and 6 is again in this direction. All right. He is now has direct line of sight to both of these soldiers, so we're going to have a spot check happen on both of them. First, we'll do Corporal Taylor straight down. That's a distance of 1, and on, on the spot modifiers, a distance of 1 is plus 2. And he's, he's got a plan order in a hedge, which is a modifier of minus 1. So that is a plus 1 overall modifier with a troop quality of six, so a seven or less, and we have a spot. It's zero, so that's a spot. We now have just one unspotted friendly character, and that's Private Walsh over here, but we're gonna do another spotting check. It's a, a range of two, which is a plus one modifier. He's got run and gun. Uh, as, as his order. Let's see, run and gun and the hedge is zero. So it is a plus one modifier, just like last time. Against a troop quality of six, meaning a seven or less. And he also rolls a zero. What that means is that all friendly characters are now spotted. We still have two unknown enemy characters, but all friendly characters have been spotted and are now fair game if there's line of sight. Uh, that's the end of the red team. We now go to Charlie team. First up is uh, Private Walsh. He can either shoot up here or he has line of sight here. Uh, this is run and gun, uh, which means he has to move. And I'm going to move him right here. Uh, that may take him out of line of sight there, but it sets up an easier shot. Uh, there. Uh, Corporal Thomas has uh, zero, so he does nothing. Now, Private Stubbs had melee, but remember that melee is over, so that order is removed, and he is given a duck back order. And I just want to look at the timing of that to see if it changes to hide or not immediately. It receives a duck back order when it next activates, which means the uh, hide order will not come until the next impulse. Let me find the duck backs. Here we are. <clears throat> so that's the end of Charlie team. We go to Baker team, and we've kind of got the same exact situation that we had last time. <clears throat> we've got three soldiers... He has line of sight here, but not to anybody else. He has line of sight to here and here, and he has line of sight to all three. And so I'm going to try to do the same thing. I'm going to start out with Private Johnson shooting here. That's a distance of two, except that he has aimed fire, so he can't fire this round. As does he have aimed fire, so he can't shoot this round, which leaves me with just Private Goldstein, I'm going to shoot here, even though it's uh, <clears throat> he's not going to do anything. I want to get him out of the way. So a bar with a range of one has a plus two modifier. The enemy soldier is hiding in the open. That's a minus two modifier. So the modifiers cancel each other out. So it's a straight weapon skill, which is minus four. But rapid fire itself has minus two. So it's a two or less, 
And again, he gets to shoot twice if I choose, and I do. First roll is a five, so that's a miss. Second roll is an eight, another miss. My guys can't hit something standing right in front of them. All right, uh, we've already decided that the other soldiers have aimed fire, so they can't do anything, and there's no chance of spotting the unknown enemy soldiers. So that's the end of Baker's impulse. We now go to the blue team impulse. Uh, for here for impulse three, we have named fire, which is a zero, so nothing happens. Oh, I forgot over here this red soldier, but it's a suppression fire of zero. So we have aimed fire, which is zero, so nothing happens. Hide, which is zero, nothing happens. Aimed fire is zero, nothing happens. Hide is zero, nothing happens. Since all soul, uh, friendly uh, characters are spotted, no spotting happens. That was a quick impulse for blue team because it's over. And that's the end of the third impulse. We'll now move on to the fourth and final impulse here of turn number three. Again, we'll start with red team, fourth impulse. We start with this order up here, which is hide, so he does nothing else. Uh, we've got slow suppression fire right here. Now he can see here, he can see here. Uh, and we already determined that with suppression fire, there are no modifiers for orders. So they have equal chance of being hit uh, and they're equal distance. So again, we'll roll a 1d6 with Private Miller being shot at at a 1d3. It's a 6. So Private Goldstein is going to be the one being shot at this turn. But again, since it's suppression fire, order and terrain don't matter. Just distance and orders uh, from the, the shooter. It's a set distance of six, so there's no modifier for range, no terrain change, no order change, so it's a straight weapons skill, and that's a five. And we roll, it is indeed a five, and so it's a hit, but because it's suppression fire, instead of hit, instead of drawing to see what happens, it's an automatic morale check. However, unlike last time up here, we have bold morale, so he's got a plus one to his troop quality of four, so his troop quality is five. We do the morale check, it comes out six, all right? That is a failure on the morale check, and that's a minus one morale level. Now, normally that would put me down to cautious, but because his morale had already been up, it just brings him back down to normal. We get rid of the bold uh, marker. So that's the end of the red suppression fire. And that's uh, last we have is over here run and gun with a fire order. He can see two potential targets. So the, the they're both a distance of one so those uh, modifiers cancel out. So let's look at the order and terrain. Corporal Thomas's plan in the hedge, that's minus one. Uh, Private Walsh is run and gun in the cornfield. And that's a zero modifier, so he's going to be easier to hit. And so that's who he's going to target is Private Walsh. So a distance of one with a car 98K is a plus two modifier. The terrain and order modifier is zero so it's still plus two however his order run and gun is minus two which brings us right back to uh, uh, weapon skill his weapon skill is six I don't like this and we roll a four that's a hit on private Walsh it's a regular hit so we have to go ahead and choose a wound card and the wound card comes up light wound that means, as we've already talked about before, that's a light wound on Private Walsh. We also change his order, which is just as bad, from run and gun to duck back. And he takes a wound morale check at minus one to his troop quality, which makes his troop quality four. It's a six, so he fails. And that's a minus two on the morale scale. Uh, he was at normal, 
that minus two takes him almost down to the bottom. Uh, and so he goes right through cautious and lands it shaken. Show you a shaken marker here. He gets a minus two to troop quality and a minus two to uh, weapon skill. So he's now got a minus three to each. He started out with five, so his effective troop quality right now is two with a weapon skill of one. All right, that's the end of the red team. We now go to Charlie team. Well, he's got uh, duck back, so that immediately changes to hide. He's got plan, so he does nothing. He also has duck back, so it immediately changes to hide. That's the end of Charlie team. We go back to Baker team. And it's the same thing we did two impulses ago. We've got the same targets, the same choices. Private Johnson with aimed fire and a red one means he can fire. Fire is there. That's a distance of two, which is a plus one modifier. He's got a hide order in the open. That is a minus two modifier, so we're at minus one. Aimed fire is his order, so nothing else changes. His weapon skill is 5 with a minus 1 modifier. He needs a 4 or less to hit. And he rolls a 6, so he misses. I'm next going to go here. Same thing, aimed fire, uh, but a distance of 1. That's a plus 2 modifier. The hide in the open is a minus 2 modifier. And there's no order change. So it's a straight up weapon skill which is also four. So again, we need a four or less, and we roll a three. All right, so we've got a hit on uh, this soldier here who already is suffering minus two to his morale. Uh, a bad wound here would make it minus five, and that's his troop quality, which would kill him. So let's take a look. It's a light wound. Now, he's already received a light wound, if you'll recall. Gets another one. And so his modifiers are now at minus three, which means he's down to a troop quality, effective troop quality of two. And his order immediately changed to duck back. Well, not that it matters because it's going to go right to hide. And we do a morale, a wound morale check with a minus three to his troop quality, which means a wound morale check is at minus two. This doesn't look good for him. Comes out as a nine. <clears throat> and a nine on a wound morale check is a minus three morale level. You cannot go lower than route. Uh, he goes right from cautious to shaken and right into rout. Now, routing uh, is both good and bad here for him. Uh, when you rout, I'll take his cautious level off. Number one, you lose the cautious morale level, which means you lose the minus ones. And you'll see rout has two all levels, but one's leadership and one shot making ability. He loses a minus one modifier to troop quality. So he's routed. Uh, when you route, you are very limited in what you can do for your orders. And that'll take place at the beginning of his next impulse. Or at the beginning of his next turn, not impulse. So he'll have to finish out this impulse first. That is, if he's still around, uh, because that was after the aimed fire from Private uh, Johnson. We still have Private Goldstein with his bar, and I'm still going to have him shoot. Boy, that's one tough cookie to, to kill there after we brought him back. Uh, range is one, so that's a plus two modifier. He's got uh, duck back in the open, so that's zero. So that's still plus two. Rapid fire is minus two, so that's zero. It's a weapon skill only, and it's a four with two potential shots. The first shot is nine, that's a miss. 
But because it's nine, Private Goldstein now has low ammo. Going to shoot again. Need a four or less. Comes up with a four. That's a hit. So let's take a look and see what happens. He's been hit quite a bit. This time, KIA, and we didn't forget anything this time. So that soldier is finally taken off the board for real this time. Go ahead and remove his marker. That's more victory points. And an enemy KIA marker goes in its place. And uh, that's the end of Charlie Team's impulse, or Baker Team's. So we go to the blue team. This will be the last team in this turn. First is aimed fire, but he has nobody to shoot at. Hide and aimed fire. All right. So we can only shoot at one of these two guys. We've already uh, determined. Well, which one's easier to hit? Is it's, it's going to be Private Miller because the uh, uh, range, I'm sorry, the order terrain modifier is is uh, higher for him. So uh, we've got a distance of one, two, three, four, five, six. That's no modifier for the weapon he uses. We've got aimed fire in the open as a modifier of zero. Just to check, I'm going to check rapid fire in a tree is minus two. So yeah, we'll go with the zero modifier. So that's zero and zero. So we'll do just a weapons skill, which is three. Comes up as nine. Now that's very significant. Nine, because remember, a natural nine means you give a low ammo marker unless he already has a low ammo marker, which he does. So that immediately changes to out of ammo. And so we'll go ahead and place the out of ammo marker here, which means next turn, the only or if he gets a fire order normally, that'll be changed to a reload order. Um, but that's the end of the impulse for the blue team. It's the end of the fourth impulse, which makes it the end of the turn, which means we'll have to wait until turn number four to see that. Just very quickly, uh, we'll go through our end of turn information. We have no grenades. There's no uh, character with a medic. However, we do have a friendly character with a plan order. And so we need to do a troop quality check here to see if he adds extra cards. And let me just double check here real quick on that. That's against the, the troop quality. If he passes and his troop quality is seven, so odds are good, we add the number of cards equal to his leadership skill, which is two. So we roll, huh, wouldn't you know, nine, fails. That entire turn was wasted. So, no extra cards added. No smoke, no waiting characters. Remove all orders. And again, I'll just go ahead and remove everything. You'll start to see some of these other markers that can pop up on characters, which is why you don't add a morale marker if they're at the default level. So we've removed orders, taking a real quick check, we remove the impulse marker back to one, move our impulse order markers off. It's not the end of the game, so we don't do a victory check. We move our turn marker to number four, we discard our cards, and we are now ready to start turn number four. Uh, but we're going to do that in the next video. But just know this, with, with turn number four, reinforcements arrive for the Germans. So uh, we'll be back in a little bit with turn number four.